you know, so at this moment I'm thinking about what do I want to eat and well I was thinking about pizza so here I put in my prompt uh using focus a pizza with this very detailed prawn also negative prawn and I got this but also say well I also want a dessert so I put here also in the prompt uh what do I want as a dessert this detailed one and I got a this very nice uh chocolate cake so in this video I just want to show you the difference between focus and automatic 1111. Both of them, they do use a stable diffusion, but what it changed, uh, it is the graphical user interface. So I hope to give you some guidelines and also very important, I hope you follow the previous two videos and you install both libraries, okay? Both uh, user interface, which is very straightforward in Windows, Windows 11. And then probably later I will prepare another video to do it in Linux or using a uh, subsystem Linux or in Mac. So let's go into business. So the important thing that after, after you install automatic 11.11, you have the link here and also you have the link to, to the installation in the description and you install focus, which is another user interface for a stable diffusion. So this is a very important concept, both libraries or both applications, automatic 1111 and focus, there are user interfaces to another application, another big model, which is a stable diffusion. Okay. So a stable diffusion is just a model to generate images. Now it's a text to image model that it would recognize your text. It would have a language model and it is trained using big models and these neural networks and so on. I don't want to go into details, but it's up to you to look a little bit more in the internet. Uh, so here you have also these links. Important, stable diffusion is not the only one. There are some other applications. So you have Mic Journey, something similar, a little bit more, a little bit different from a stable diffusion, the interface and so on, but the concept is pretty much the same. And also probably you might be aware of DALI, okay, the one that's developed by, by the same guys from ChatGPT, but also is used in by, by Microsoft Info Image Generator. So they do the same text to image but they have been trained in different ways. Important also to stress that it's not anymore text to image. Now they do image to image, uh, text to video. So hopefully later on, we're going to move into more advanced concepts and we're going to see how to generate text to image. We can also improve images or scaling and much, much more. So you have the links on other important links is where do you have this model? So I would like to address another concept because we talk about models, then you have refiners, LoRa libraries, styles, prompts, and so on. So basically you have your main application. We're going to use our model. Our library will be stable diffusion. And then we're going to use models that have been trained. Okay. According to some data, I'm not going into details, but we have here this website, a hugging face, which probably, uh, it's here where is the most complete one. You have all the community get together and put everything here. So we have, for instance, you look here, stable diffusion, and you have this specific model, or let's call it, you will find the, the, the war checkpoint. So they call it a checkpoint and you get that specific checkpoint that has been trained, but for that day and well, you can generate your image. So there is a lot of stuff here that you can search. So feel free to register and I strongly recommend it to register because you can find, you are going to find many libraries here and to use some other applications you, you need it. So other uh, extensions that we, we can use with stable diffusion or with automatic 1111 or with focus. Then very important, where do we look for more models? You have here that is very complete this one, but then also you have civic AI that I strongly recommend here. Here you have many, many, many more model checkpoints and and so on other <clears throat> extensions that you can add to your library. So for instance, you will find very often, I already mentioned the checkpoint. Checkpoint is just the, 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 the state of that model that was trained up until this point. So you have many of them and it will be up to you to pick up one. Then there are some other things such probably you're going to find words like LoRa. LoRa is something, it is a model, but it's not a, a, a big model such as the checkpoints. You already know that those can be as big as 12 gigs. LoRa is something smaller 
that is used to improve your your images and also you have refiners dye and so on so probably you don't need to know all this stuff the important thing your checkpoint maybe a refiner and then probably as you go you will need to download something else but i started recommend this site uh, this website to look for that, that information but not only you get that those checkpoints you can also get for instance i really like to look in this website for instance you can look for wild wild cars okay and wild cars here will be the prompts and we have talked that prompts are very important when you are generating. You have to be very specific or not super specific, but whatever you put in your, in, in the prompt, it cannot be something vague. You need to convey an idea and also try to avoid abstract, abstract concepts. So kind of you give an adjective noun and a verb. So an instruction from that you can get fantastic images you can you can see here so for instance you want to look something to do for nature and you can get many uh checkpoints or lora or embedding or or wildcard so it's up to you to pick up one i strongly recommend it when you pick up one you have for instance the checkpoint read a little bit the description so look at that this is a tool 2.4 gigs and sometimes you have the description the keywords that you need to use and so on lora is the same so read a little bit of description what is happening okay to know how to use it uh after this another website that i strongly recommend is lexica lexica I really like this one so lexica use another model this is proprietary to them it's not of open source so just talking about this stable diffusion and everything that you find in in hugging face and cbaa is open source lexica is not an open source they have their own model so this is the latest one and you cannot download it, you need to use it in the website and you need to subscribe, okay? So the subscription, in this case, you need to pay to get access to the whole stuff. The whole idea when we install Stable Diffusion and when we install Automatic 11.11 or Focus is that we want to do it locally using the GPU. To stress also, you need a good GPU. You can do this with the CPU, but it is very, very, very slow. So I recommend you to have a GPU, at least a DIX, can work with lower money uh, memory but is let's say that uh a gx probably will give you the best performance so this is lexica and you this i use you use it mainly for prompts so let's say that i was talking about dinner and thinking about pizza so i put the pizza order and then you click there and you can get now some prompts, some ideas what to put. As I say, everything here is using Lexica. From time to time, probably they use some other library, but you have an idea of the prompts. Sometimes you have the negative prompts and so on. So we're going to address those concepts. And then also I like this, this website, Night Cafe. Okay, it's a fantastic one. I use it a lot. It's something similar to Lexica, but here you have two types of subscription. It's free and then there are, they have challenges here and you enter and you, you participate and you can get free points and you engage with the community. And also the subscription is very low. So I actually have a subscription here. And well, talking about my favorite food here and you have some very nice ice creams. Uh, let's say here, oh, a nice cake. Wow, beautiful graphic. And here you can get the prompt. Uh, not always all the users uh, show the prompt. So let's see, for instance, this one. Let's see if this user is showing the prompt. As you go here, okay, so that's hidden the prompt. But you get the idea that you're using this library and so on. So this is my advice. Just get this website, get familiar with the... Uh, get familiar with, with this concept. You need to be an expert in machine learning and deep neural networks. So everything has been done for you but you have everything there so now that we have this small introduction now let's use the libraries so this is my computer this is the where i have installed everything so as you see i have different versions so i have automatic 11 11 i have these two versions of focus i have comfy ue and well these are all versions because the one that i'm using to experiment so remember this stuff can be big um, be careful that you need is space. So first, let's work with focus. So I will go here and remember that you enter in your here. You have your installation, and just to 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 launch focus, you click here. Okay, and this one it's going to launch the user interface, and also it's going to do an update 
and if there are new files, it will update everything and you have this additionally will download extra libraries. So let, let me launch and let's work with focus. And while it's opening, okay, you have here, we have here our user interface and everything since that is working and you have all the messages and look at the information here. I mentioned that works in GPU, it's recommended to, to have the GPU to get the best performance. Let's talk about a little bit the directory structure. So as you enter into focus, there is not much that you need to know. So I recommend you not to mess around, but use it if you erase something automatically when you run again, uh, the script is going to download the, the files that are missing. So something important talking about the files, the models and load of libraries, so all that stuff, they can be big. So usually in my case, look at that, I have many uh, many user interface or applications libraries. So I have a lot of space, uh, I use a lot of space, which I do have, but maybe my, it would be better just to, to centralize everything. So usually my practice is to put everything in automatic 11.11, and then I can share, if I have extra libraries, I can share with automatic 11.11, and this is what I'm doing. So I only have the base libraries of focus, and then I share everything with automatic 11.11. So for instance, uh, in focus is you want to, to change the user path where you have the libraries. Look at that. You have this file here and you can change the path. Okay. So if you have a different path, you can move everything to that path and you will find the information there. So you have also many options here. So feel free to experiment something. Remember that if you damage something, you can erase it automatically. It will download the latest file. It will update everything but be careful. Uh, then there is another way to do it that probably will be, let's say the, the most, most advanced way. So if you go into models and you have many Python scripts and you feel free just to see what is happening here. But the interesting one here is this path. So as you go in that one path Python there, as you can guess, maybe we're going to have the path to the libraries and so on. So as you read here, so that you have the location. In this case, you have relative path. So if you want, you can also modify it directly here. But honestly, I prefer in this case, just to use this user path config. I feel more comfortable, but it's up to you and you need to do it, okay? If you want to have different installations and if you are not downloading many models, just have it separated. This probably is the, the, is the safest, safest way. The other, uh, directory that I want to show you here. I don't go I'm not going into details in every all in every directory is models. So as you can guess, you have here the models. So if you go into checkpoints, here you have your big models. So recall that for instance you want a new checkpoint, you can go here into Civic AA and you can download a new model. Whatever model you want, you click, you download, and then you can put that model directly here. And then when you open your application, your user interface, it will recognize. So let me go here and I click advance and see that you have this tab models and here you can access different models. So in this case, I'm using this one, the default value uh, model here is Joggernaut XL, but I using this one and this is specific model user refiner. So a refiner is an extra library that it will improve whatever you have in your base model. <laughs> So refiners, be careful, refiners, they do not generate an image, they improve this. So as you put a refiner here, it's going to give you an error and not every big model will have a refiner. So here you're going now and this one they don't have. So depending on what you have, you have different actions and the same is here for the LoRa's. So you have different LoRa's and the location and you can choose which one do you want to, to, to use? So I want to mention also that probably you're seeing differences from what you have because my installation already downloaded some other live extra models and additions and extensions, but feel free just to, to update it. So the LoRa, when it comes to, to, to LoRa, uh, it's pretty much the same. You have here LoRa's and you put it there. Okay, so look at that likely pro. I think you are not going the original installation, you have anything. So here I really put some models and pretty much it is the same. No, if you are you have control net, here you have extension for control net that we are going to look about to talk about that later because it is impressive. Another interesting uh directory here, it is style models. So styles, oh sorry, no, yeah, if it was in the wrong models, pa, 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 pa. okay, nothing else to add here. 
Okay, so these are these are different concepts just to improve your output. So if we go back here, another interesting directory is this one is the L X styles, and here you have all your styles. That is your let's say your digital uh, fingerprint. So you put a text here, but then you give an style like hyper realistic and a style of Van Gogh and whatever you put it here. So this is the tricky part to get those styles. Some people use ChatGPT and whatever, but it's up to you to 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 try and uh, to try. But the advantage of focus that I, what I like is that focus have many pre-configured styles. So here you go, you have all these styles and. You have many styles there. So you see that you have a prompt. This means whatever you use that style, whatever you put in the prompt will be substituted here, or you just can copy and paste and have your style. And negative, remember, is what you don't want to put there. So don't do double negation and negate two times. It's not like no ugly, just ugly is not just negative. And you have many styles there, and you will see that they do make. A difference so be careful about that use styles but also don't overdo when you put in a style but to stress that these styles that comes with focus are fantastic and you have many styles there and actually i use them as a reference to move to automatic 11 11 that that one that user interface doesn't come with a style so i like to to look at this one so then well we look, talk about models the styles feel free to play with those styles. And then here you have advanced options. Also remember that you have this document here that would be kind of a help. It's very useful and actually invite you always to click when you see it, to click there. Then here you're going to see this guidance scale and sometimes you see steps that probably when we move to automatic 11, we are going to have more, more options. This is one of the other big advantage of focus that it do, you need to, to deal with all those options it has been already optimized and with the default parameters, it works very well. But if you want to know what are those parameters, uh, let me go here. I have a couple of figures just to show you these figures. You, you can find this in the internet, but also you can generate it. Okay. Later, this is with automatic 1111. So this in our case, does not apply. This is the one that we want. So see that CFG, this is the scale. This is the influence. So the larger the value, the more details that you are going to, to get, but maybe you are going to oversaturate your image. So try to avoid very large values. Honestly, the default value that you're going to find seven is okay. Sometimes I go to 12. I don't got, I don't like to go too high and you can guess the larger, also the more time consuming is going to be, uh, uh the image generation. So this is it. Uh, and I think we are on time just to do here a first prompt so i would like to do a prompt let's say related to nature so i already have here i mentioned that i like to have my prompts and i have some landscapes here and let me do this one okay i have a few prompts that i generate let me put put it here uh here in advance you have random so you can deselect this one and then this will be your seat number Okay, so always know this will be repeat the same model and then you can pay, play around with options. And let me do just one image and negative prompt. Uh, uh, I have the default by focus that it is, I know enhance is the default, is you are in doubt, remember that you can go to your uh, installation and here we should see focus enhance, it's just negative prompts. So, but as you want, you can put here, avoid no uh put a no there because you are doing a double uh a no double no so let's say that for instance i don't want table okay maybe we'll put a table and let's click generate and this is it off you go and let's see what happens Also, as mentioning that this runs in the GPU, so here you see that my GPU is going on fire. Not very often I see it like this, but yeah, it's going crazy. And there you go. We have a fantastic image. I have to say that the results are, it is impressive. This is fantastic. I have no word to describe, but this is what we get with this one. And Feel free at this point 
just to change your stats and you will see different outcomes. So just to get consistency, you can put the same set number and then you will see you no know, probably seem similar, but you can try different things. And to show you that, let's go to the default style. So I don't want anything here. Let me use this. And I don't, okay, I want to use this one. I know this style, you know, it's a hyper realistic style. And if you are in doubt, you can go here and let's, let me go, let's see if I can find it here. Okay, it's this one, this is style. So this is to do more realistic images. So important, look at that, it's way much smaller now that this file size of the checkpoint. And the idea is just to improve your input in my image. So you have an image and then you have the native networks and everything talking together and you improve that. So let's see what happens that now I change to this model. And now I also use this LoRa. You can combine different LoRa libraries, by the way, and you can change the weight and so on. So let me click here, generate. Okay, so we have the image here. Well, the GPU usage, as you see, is just using the GPU, bursting your GPU. So important here, that probably you realize that this one it was slower. Okay, so depending, there are some libraries that are much much heavier than the other. So there is this difference. So this Juggernaut, in general speaking, is a very good one. Oh, it's the latest. It's called SDXL. No, Stable Diffusion XL. Extra large, I guess, will be that XL. Then you have the standard Stable Diffusion, which is a very good one, which is the 1.5. So this one that I used here previously. I know it was uh, XXL. I don't have the 1.5 here. So when we will move to automatic 11.11, we're going to see that one. So this is this is it. How 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 do you, how you play? Very important, as I mentioned, prompts. Is, they are very important. Your negative prone and so on, and the styles. So this is a big advantage in focus that you have all those styles already embedded embedded there, and they are really good. So feel free just to experiment with all those styles. And there is a link. Give me a minute. Okay, we have this link. It's a fantastic link. And you have here all the styles of uh, of focus, which also would be equivalent to the styles that you put in any user interface using the stable diffusion and the same model. So this is fantastic. And to stress that this, you can do it now using, well, this is more with automatic 1111. You can create this uh this matrix of all these styles so fantastic you have all your styles it will be up to you to pick up one so it's a really really good reference you will have it in the video description and to stress that this is not uh only uh uh, restricted uh, to, to, to focus, it can be used with any stable diffusion, just copy and paste, you know, the keywords, you know, where you have it. We look at the source code. So use those keywords and yeah, go crazy. Uh, and now before moving to another, to automatic 11, 11, I just want to show you another case. And this is a very particular, I like it a lot. I have it here and I want to do text so it might look something easy and let me put this one this simple text here an apple a blackboard with the text hello so look at how specific i want an apple but an apple is kind of an abstract because it can be one but also the the the, <clears throat> the 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 language model that you have there might interpret that like as a two three whatever would put more apple so let's see what happens but let's focus in the part of the text because getting text it's not easy. And later we're going to see some techniques just to try to get the, the text to improve that or to force to have a specific text. So look at what we have here. It put the text on the app, it didn't put it on the blackboard, but you can try. Okay. You do another iteration, but look, that is not properly the word you say, hello, it put in something else. And believe me, this is not easy to do, to get test, uh, to get text text using all you know, this model text to image. It's quite tricky and the best way to do that. And here I still have the table keyword and let me put here and to do it a little bit more complex. So let me put this one more specific. No, so now I go 
put this apple, use color lithograph, uh, René Magritte style, and a blackboard in the background with the text. So now it's kind of specifying that I want that blackboard in the background and try to put that, that text there. And the test is sissing a pom pom. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit, no, way much, much complicated. So let's go here, random sit, and let's see what happens. Okay, here we have the two images. And so, as I mentioned, well, probably you know this style, probably you see the similarities with these specific artists and so on, but fantastic, fantastic, I have to say, these images. But then the problem, the big problem is the test, the, 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 the text. And 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 believe, uh, believe it, it's extremely difficult to put it, and don't get frustrated if you you don't manage to put text text because it's really difficult. But then using control net that will prepare the video how to install, but it's extremely easy. I think things will get much much better. So this is it, uh, how we use it, and at this point I'm done with focus. I give you some guidelines, important, just get those prompts and get those styles will be your personal style, your fingerprint or digital artistic fingerprint. So at this point, let's move to automatic 11.11. Okay, now I move to automatic 11.11. I have my installation here and similar like focus, you're going to have the scripts there. Here, you have an extra one update. So you click there and it will update your installations, there are dates. So in this case, there are a few days there. Let me press, it was updated. And now click run bad and it's going to launch your, your user interface, automatic 11.11 is stable diffusion. And while it's opening that, and also to stress, I recommend you to use uh, Google Chrome, or in my case, I prefer to use Microsoft Edge. I found it that is more efficient but it's up to you. Firefox is the one that performs the worth in this case. So I don't like to use it, but it's up to you. They all will, they, they, they all are going to work. Uh, so similar to focus and well, here we have the user interface. Let me put it in the background there. Let me minimize here and look at the directory organization. Uh, similar to focus. No, you have here in system, you're going to have all the Python also in focus. You have a directory where you have all the Python. Remember here, you don't need to install any extra library. This is the big advantage of the installation method that we use. Okay. So you follow our videos, you will see. And as you go in wet UI, here's where you have all the directories and similarities that I want to mention here. Models similar to the one that we found in in focus here, you have these directories. In this case, we are going to have your stable diffusion checkpoints in this directory. So as you look at that, I already have the checkpoints that I have at this big one. So it's a lot of data that I have there. Then you have similar LoRa models and so on, control net and stuff like that. Later, we're going to see. So the concept is pretty much the same, everything in models. Uh, similar also, you go here in models, you are going to have this file, the pass, Okay, the Python script that you can uh, ta, 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 here that you can uh, adjust, adjust the, the, the path where you have all your libraries and some other options. So feel free to modify. But honestly, when it comes to this one, I, this is my main installation and I, I like to centralize everything here and then all the other user interface I like to point to this one. Uh, then we have another directory extensions. And here you are going to install those extensions. Those are additional software that you have here. And look at that. We have been talking a lot about stable diffusion, uh, control net, and I have the extension here, control net. And then within this extension, you have models and you can put more models there. So this is how it works important folder. Then you have this folder outputs very important that you also have it in, in, in focus. So this folder, be careful that I, I recommend you to clean a little bit every now and then because you can get a lot of data. So here I have a few images, but I have a lot of data. So these are the images that are put there automatically. Not, not big as a deal, same with focus. And Another important script, let me see that we have here, it is styles, okay? The styles here, you have it, you need to create this file, a style CSV, 
you don't have it okay this when you have the original installation you don't have it but i put it here and you can put styles like this in there so i'm using these styles we have this youtuber sebastian camp that he does a lot of videos about uh generative ai and very good i strongly recommend it to visit his his channel and then using his style you can put it there but by default you don't have it and if you want you can use the same styles that you have in focus just copy and paste you see the syntax is a little bit different here is a CF cfv file focus is a json file for those who knows where it's a json file but just copy and paste and you will have it so yeah this is the general organization and now let's move to the graphical user interface so as you see it's way much, much different than the one for Focus. It's, uh, it's more advanced. So Focus, it is just one window in the prone and then you have everything there and you're going to get good good images at the first try. You, I can guarantee that. Here, since uh, are different, tricky. So here you can select your mobile. Uh, this is the full one. You have the juggernaut and you will realize here, you see here, the juggernaut is way much slower than in focus. I don't know the reason is a little bit strange, but you can choose your models here. And then you go down here, look at that. You have Lora, you can access the Lora. Be careful that those uh, extra additions like Lora and hyper networks on textual inversion, all this stuff, they need to be compatible with your checkpoint. So if you are using the stable diffusion 1.5, you need to use a Lora compatible with that. If you are using XDX, SDXL, the Lora needs to be compatible and so on. So similar to that one, you have to, to, to focus, you have text to image, you put it here, and then you have negative prompt. In your original installation, you don't have any styles. In this case, I have styles because I put that, that file there, but you need to have those styles. Remember that is your prompt. Then you have this entries here, probably your user interface will be different because I have many extensions. So later we're going to see, but I have like aspect ratio, the control net, fantastic and i hope to do a video on that then you have image to image you get an image similar concept to text to image extras that probably this is ox scaling and batch processing this is very important png and this is specific for automatic 11 11 sometimes uh, not sometimes by default in the settings it is configured to save the metadata of the image here that you don't have that in focus but in focus you have a log file but let me show you that if i go here and remember that you have in wet UE, you have output and you have all your outputs there. And let me get one here and I'll put it here. You get the metadata. Instead, if I do the same with focus that just look at it, you have the output folder and I put the image here, you don't have the metadata. The advantage in focus that focus automatically is going to create this log file. Let me open with Firefox there. And there you have all the data, no? uh, nice HTML with the data. This is the way how you can recover that data. So I forgot to mention that in focus, you have the information there. So you have more information. You can train, retrain your model. You have general settings here. Just talking about where the files or the default format and everything. You have here images, you have the path, also default path. You can see you can change that. Uh, and more stuff. Something interesting here or important uh, it is one live preview. So you see when you are generating the image, you see that evolution here, you can control that. So as you put it in zero, you are not going to see or negative, nothing. So the default value is 10, but feel free to, to, to play around with this option just to get an idea. You can also go to the website and the website, you, you have a wiki and you, all that information, you have it there or not all. So sometimes you need to dig. A little bit more to get that information. Uh, um, then extension. And this is important tab. This is where you install those famous or famous extensions. So this is what I have installed. So probably you are going only to have this, I think. And here I installed those extra. So we went through this also in the original installation video. So you have here available and as you load, you have all the extension that are already safe here in this file that can be updated in GitHub. And let me deselect here, install, and you can see all the extensions. So for instance, if you want to install, and let me go back to control net and kind of, this is the control net installation. And you find it that you're going to have it there, install your control net and that's all. So you have many 
many there, many options there, for instance, animate. This is a nice library that you can do text to animations. Fantastic, crazy, you can install. So feel free to explore everything. Also, you can update. So as you go here, check updates, and you can also get the, give directly the, the path and so on. So let me see if there are updates here. And it automatically will update. I have an update. I'm not going to install that now so after I finish this video. And that's all. Now, this is the brief, uh, the brief explanation of the GUI. Important that now here you see more options, you know, contrary to focus that everything was hidden. They are not exposed here. You have everything exposed. So it will give you more control. So this is similar to the one in to the one that you have in, in focus that is also default seven but now you have a steps and also sampling methods so let me go i have the images here so there are many sampling methods also you have that option you can control that in in, in focus in the advanced debugging actions but the the, the default one works fine so this is what happened different uh different sampling methods and talking about that this kind of matrix you can create it here using uh using automatic 11, 11. So usually different methods, you no know, sampling method will give you different outputs. There is no nothing written which one is the best one. The tendency in the community says that this is the best one, but I think it depends what you're trying to do or your image. But what is important is steps. Steps is very important. The more steps, the, the more fid fidelity that you get, but also the more time consuming. So usually 20 is a good value. I can go up to 30, but yeah, you can change that by a variable. And similar, you have access to CFG, okay, and control that. And then also you can control your aspect ratio, and there are more and more options to get you no know, even better images. So also I will talk about ox scaling, which is fantastic that you can do at ox scaling. So let's do something like in the focus. So let's do the nature as well. So let's use the same case and I have, have it here and let me put it here, focus, majestic. And here you have default negative prompts. You need to put it so it will be up to you. So if you want, you can use the one for focus. So I have it here, focus open. And let me just to show you, let me use the default focus and let me put it here. Put it there, or if you want, you can use, you no, know, in my case that I have it there, you can put those styles. A little bit about the syntax. When you see this parenthesis there, it means that you put all these words in parenthesis, and then at the end, semicolon and a number. So this is the weight factor. So kind of multiply 1.3 times all these keywords to give more weight. This is how you put it. This is something I think it's also coming from, from uh, but, 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 but from mid journey to have something similar. So sometimes when you see this, when that is what is happening, so you can add or also reduce weight. So I, let me put this one. You can increase here to generate more images. So let's use the default value. Something interesting is also to later more advanced stuff. So talking about those matrices you can have here. Okay. So a little bit advanced, but later we address that. So I click generate and off you go. So in using this library, you will realize that this is very fast. So recall focus, focus was sl uh, slow. Now this one is way much faster. So we get decent results, a, a fantastic result. And if I click generate again, it's going to generate another different image because we have a random set. So let's see that I don't like this one. I know why it's putting that there. Let me go and generate another one. And this is the idea. Or if you want, you can put a batch of four and generate similar images. And that's all. So when you're happy with one, for instance, you can click here and this is your seat number and just to have repeatability. Okay. Always you were going to generate that same image just to show you. You generate the same image. Or probably you can now play with these parameters and look at what will happen when we reduce the sample detail, you get something dif different. And if you increase it also likely better quality, not necessarily because you might oversaturate those images because it will start to, to get too many details. Okay. Fantastic. I think I like this one. Uh, then you have all these options saying you can, you can play with this auction later. We will we, we play with other advanced auctions. So I'm happy with this. Uh, 
image here and this is how how, how how you work so now to show you let me change now to the juggernaut library the juggernaut library is the default in focus it's not the default here the default here is the stable diffusion 1.5 and you click there, it's going to load the library. And now that you have it, you just can click generate and off you go. And you will see that this is way much slower. So you can look at your terminal here, you can see what is happening. Sometimes if you are missing some features, uh, it will download everything automatically. Here I have already everything, but uh, it might happen that it will be a little bit slow, but because it is downloading something besides you know, that, that, that it needs to get access to the, to the GPU. And at this point, I think I have to wait. Oh boy, that was time consuming. So, as I was telling you, sometimes it might happen that automatic 11 with this specific no, library model would be more time consuming. Probably also be careful about the <clears throat> the negative prompts. Sometimes they the, the pro your prompts can can have an strong influence, and actually it was also very 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 time consuming because I'm using also a large a number of sampling steps so it tried you now the image generator the model try to to stay very uh very close you now to the input text that you have here in the positive and negative prompts let's say so be careful with that so now that you get an idea and let me reduce this one. No, I don't want to do something super time consuming remember that you have the images uh in that output folder and probably you can compare you know both library both the user interface focus a stable diffusion see the outcome but what i want to show you now that you have you now the standard library let's use something a little bit more a little bit different from the previous one so this specific one cheese that is okay let's see what is happening so remember always the fantastic website that we have here recall also this is ties will also if you use the same keywords it will will apply as well with automatic 11.11 so let me go here and let's so the specific one that i want to use is this so you have all your information checkpoint the stats so and so on so this is that it it is something specific for landscapes nature. So as I'm doing some la landscapes, let's use something that has been specifically trained for that kind of, of images. So this is the diversity that you have that sometimes you're going to find some checkpoints model specifically you know, for some some type of images, or you can have the the super general models. So let's use this one but also let's use it with a lot of model so remember that those models extensions that you use they need to be compatible with this 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 model so look at that this is about two gigs and to use this when i select it here i will erase all these negative problem because sometimes they can they kind of slow down everything or let me leave it leave it there i uh, i have my prompt there and let's say that I want to use a lot of models so you have all this stuff here and first let me let, let's generate the image okay the standard one and here in Lora you have there so I'm using this one let me refresh okay nature prono labels and it's very particular how you use that model so let me go here so you are generating the image and actually we have it, it was quite fast Okay, you can see that that jogger now was super, super slow, probably also was the influence of the, of the sample step. But interesting here that this is what we generated, a standard input, and now let's use the loaded extension in that one. So it's always text to image here, and you click here. Actually, here you have info and information, and then also you, you can 
set up something image, how you activate the library that you are using. Remember that they need to be compatible with the model that you are using and so on. But to use it, they do have an activation key that actually you can put it here, activation text, or you can click here and see that now you append this and it means that you are using that model. So as you recall focus that there was a weight 0, 1, 1, that's pretty much the same. But this is how you act activate it. And let's look at this specific one. Let's see what does it does. So you can always go here or human, fa human face. And this, da, 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 let's see the one that I'm using now. Nature Pro. This is the one I'm using. So it is a model, a checkpoint, a lot of libraries specifically trained to make sense more realistic, no landscapes. So talking about the size, I don't have it here, but it's very small. Uh, and then, well, you can have some information how to activate it, the trigger war and so on. So this is what we're going to do. Use a additional library model just to make it, let's say if we make something way much better. So saying, random number, set number, and generate, and let's see what happens. So all these images, we can always go uh, to the directory where we have all the output, and we can just be solid in that. So, and here, and the two last images. So this is, and here I can close this one. So this was with no load and no model, with load and model. And kind of, I think, yeah, is this one probably seems a little bit more realistic. Maybe yes, maybe not. But yeah, that's the point. Okay, you can play with this one. And now let's say that, let me change this one and put 0 0.5 the weight. And let's see what happens and the influence. Clearly, but yeah, there is some influence, but pretty much the same. So this is the idea, you know, this LoRa, and there, there is much, much stuff that hopefully we're going to, to cover. Uh, so just to end this video, let's redo also the case, the prompt with the, with the Apple. So I really like that one. And this is saying that we're going to get the same stuff, but prompts here and but here as I recommend you that uh, to have those keywords so you said it for me now but this is almost a universal negative prompts that always you have around and I want to use this one the easy one I'm not going to put negative word I'm not going to use any any extra models um be careful that you need to switch now to the Stable Diffusion Standard Library. I'm not going to use the Juggernaut. Uh, Juggernaut is kind of heavy and generate. So this is relatively fast and there you go. And as I say, putting text is incredibly difficult. It is probably you will get the idea using focus is easier and you can get something closer here. It's way much, much difficult using automatic 11 by 11, but you can get there, but there are specific techniques to, to, to do that. And now let's go to the one. Um, well, uh, you can put also, let's randomize here, there, and let's see what happens with that random. So I asked for one apple. I look at that it's putting more than one apple. The text is way far. It's not even a blackboard. This one, one apple, kind of a blackboard, but the text not even close. So this is when things get tricky. And uh, now let me put here and generate. So this for sure, it will not be not even close. As you can see here. I don't, didn't put the text, the apple is okay, kind of there is something new. The background here, not even close, and so on. So probably if I increase this one, might get an improvement. So see that sometimes can put some watermark, so you can get there and put negative problem that watermark, try to avoid the watermark. So at this point, let's see if we can get something much closer to the previous. So let's use a uh, focus style. And I want to use masterpiece. Okay, let's use this style. 
and let's keep this random number. Let me add here and then master path, the prompt. I can erase that one and let's see what happens with this one. When I add a much refiner style, well, didn't impress much, but see the difference there. And you can also add the negative prompt. Let me go there and let's see what happens with this negative prompt. Okay, so look a bit different now, adding that negative prompt. The text is the most difficult thing to, to add. Uh, it might be a good idea. Let's add this Lora uh, model, which is not related at all, but let's see what happens when I add that. So not much different. Kind of probably is oversaturating. So let me go erase all this stuff and go to the original one and just this stay with this one. So look at the network negative keywords. This is that we have low res, so I don't want low resolution and so on. And let's use another model just to show you. So about this one, I'm kind of a little bit familiar with that one, but you don't want to go into details. Not much difference. Yeah, you can see probably they're, they're kind of the pixels, no, the little bit more granular. So yeah, at this point, I hope you, you have an idea. Uh, remember prompt is important. No, this is part of this prompt engineering. So avoid abstract concepts and convey an idea, object, action, verb, noun, subjective, no, be, yeah. Try to, to you know, just to give that clear idea because you have there a language model that it will give an interpretation to everything. And negative words, you can put it there. So there is a library of standard negative words. And like pay, play around with the models. There are many of them. And go to Civit AI and look for the best models and get your digital you know, fingerprint for the styles. So I think I uh, found this video. Helpful. The next one will be for control net. Control net is fantastic. It's crazy. And that is what I'm using the most right now. So some control net animate the diff to do the animations. And then we can explore more and more advanced concepts. So thank you. Hope you enjoy it. I hope you found it useful. And if you find it useful, do not forget to follow us and subscribe to our channel. So I'll see you next time. Bye.